Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Gabriel Salim Foundation's live series, Consulting Without Borders Perspectives, in which we feature prominent international consultants and experts engaging in work related to global challenges. Today is July 1st, almost midsummer. I hope you're enjoying it wherever you are. Please let me know in the comments where you are tuning in from. My name is Victoria Olskaya, I am, uh, and I'm broadcasting today from Florida. I am the president of Gabriel El Salim Foundation, a U.S. nonprofit organization. We work internationally, and our mission is to create connections, promote excellence, and build a sustainable growth for all, a future for all. I'm being helped today uh, by Anya Al Salim, who is running the backstage of this broadcast from the Netherlands. Uh, thank you very much, Anya. Our today's conversation will be about Ukraine. It's not the first time that we are talking about this wonderful country. You might remember that in our April 1st episode, we heard from Dr. Stephen Tupper, one of the directors of our own foundation, who has lived and worked in Ukraine for many years, and who is actually now also in Kyiv, continuing his work helping the Ukrainian refugees and also working with the humanitarian organizations. Our foundation has very close uh, connections with Ukraine and especially Ukrainian consultants in businesses. We have several award winners, winners of our International Award for Excellence in Consulting. And I just want to show you here a photograph from our last live, you know, real life event in Bali, where we were presenting our awards. And this is the Ukrainian team. Also on February 1st of 2014, we held our third international conference, Consulting Without Borders, in Kyiv. Uh, when we started planning the event uh, in, in the previous year, we did not know that we will actually witness and be witnesses to Euro Maidan, the revolution of dignity. Eight years have passed since that time, and sadly to say, eight years of war. And now it's been culminated with a Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of this year. Our guest today is joining us from Kyiv, and she's been in Ukraine since the beginning of this invasion, working with businesses and volunteers during the territorial defense of the capital and she's been actively involved in all this work up to this day. I will be welcoming now Yelena Yuskova. She is a certified management consultant and vice president of the Institute of Management Consultants of Ukraine, CMC Ukraine. Yelena is also uh, a business coach, mediator, facilitator with over 20 years of experience. In fact, in 2014, Yelena was one of the organizers of our conference in Kyiv, and she also served as a judge on uh, the, the judge panel for the International Award of Excellence in Consulting. Yelena, very nice, very to, nice see to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Victoria. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your uh, interest in consulting and special interest in in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, it's always pleasure for me to to talk about my country and what is going on in all the times. Uh, and now, of course, it's especially important. So thank you so much for your invitation and for the possibility to share what I can share in order for other countries to avoid um, similar experiences. That's what I wish from my whole heart. Elena, I just wanted wanted to show this this photograph of us in 2014 uh, during our conference in Kyiv. It was a great event. And but again, it just it happened in the middle of uh, the Maidan revolution. And nobody knew uh, what will happen later, of course. But this is us. And I would like 
Yelena, well, we talked about what she will be covering today, and she kindly agreed to talk about her, uh, how her life uh, as uh, a person, as Ukrainian and as a consultant changed with the beginning of this invasion. She'll also, because she's been so actively involved in uh, everything, you know, related to war, she'll be talking about leadership, volunteering, charitable initiatives by Ukrainian local businesses. And she also has some ideas already about the future of Ukraine. You can post your questions to Elena in comments. If you're joining from Facebook or YouTube, you can just post your questions there and we will be able to put them on the screen so that Elena could answer them. Lena, uh, I, maybe, maybe you can, you can just, just start you know, telling, telling us, us about, about how, how your, life, your changed life changed as a consultant since the beginning of this invasion. Well, it, it changed uh, not only as a consultant, it changed in, in all possible and impossible roles at the same time. Uh, um, not only mine, yeah, but, but all the citizens of Ukraine. Because even though some, some people keep saying that uh, they knew it would happen, uh, the truth is that nobody believed. Uh, People expected that maybe it will be some some harder situation in the east of the country, but um, I believe that 90, 99 and 9% of people didn't expect that it will be full scale scale invasion. So it was total shock um, for all of us who wake up early in the morning on the 24th of February uh, from the sounds of bombs. Uh, and again, I would never wish this experience to, to anyone else. Uh, and first three days, it was uh, like uh, total, total non-understanding what's going on and, and how to live and what to do. And it's not a secret that um, most of the countries of the world gave Ukraine three days. They said three days and the war will be over. And uh, because... The, Russia is huge and strong and, and, and what can do relatively small Ukraine. Um, nobody expected that it will last not three days, but three weeks, but three months. And we do hope that not three years. Uh, but I hope that that will be much, much faster. And we have um, facts to to um, to believe it will be so uh, and we actually talked to our <coughs> army generals asking them for this phenomena of this three days from from management consultant point of view from management point of view how did you manage how how did it happen that these three days became totally uh, different from what all the world expected and for the moment none of them could give us a scheme or formula you should do this 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 it was kind of uniting of everyone army people uh, business uh, young and old men and women uh, east and west whatever it was all like all one one wave uh, which was against this this way wave of hate uh, and uh, and Hetrich, which came from from Russia, uh, that was unique three days, and then actually, uh, the the life changed totally. Yeah, it, it's life when you cannot plan, when you cannot control anything, when you cannot organize anything, because you have no idea whether you are alive tomorrow or not. It I agree, it's difficult difficult to plan under such circumstances. Uh, but people are adoptive, and so when, when we realized that, okay, no Russia in Ukraine, uh, and all people in Ukraine decided this, then we started living in new reality. And what is bunny world, we appeared to know not from the books, we appeared to know from, from our reality. When you, when your wor world, world is... Uh, um, a child, when it's uh, uh, non-linear, when it's incomprehensible, so and you have to 
um, set new rules. You have to set new um, procedures. You have to set new goals. You have to set new structures how to live in this world and live in different roles. Live in military role, in a civil role, role staying in Ukraine, role leaving Ukraine, role of parents, role of volunteers, role, role of uh, professional uh, identity. So that was really huge change. Lena, you know, uh, I know, well, first of all, I wanted to thank you again for um, finding the time and even the, the capacity to join us today because I was worried, of course, whether it will even, even work out because with the increased bombing of Kiev, you just don't know what to expect. You might have to be go and you know hide somewhere, uh, not doing a live broadcast. So I'm really humbled and I'm very thankful that you, uh, that well, and I'm thankful that things are quiet now and you can actually talk to us. Uh, I just I have this you know personal question. Uh, when the war was was starting, uh, I know that some people were were, were leaving Ukraine, uh, especially women, especially if they had had kids, of course. Uh, well, you're a woman. You decided to stay. Uh, you know why? I, I I probably have an answer, but I just wanted to give you a chance to to say it as well. Why did you stay in Ukraine? Why didn't you use a chance to? I know you have a lot of international connections. You could go probably anywhere. Speaking several languages and having PhD and uh, having really a huge international network, I really had a chance to, to go. That, that's true. But I want to show that there was no, I want to say that there was no right decision. So everybody decided what is right for himself or herself, taking into consideration lots of circumstances. Um, moreover, before the war, I had an offer from one of the best business schools in Europe uh, to come and join them, and I accepted, and I was planning to leave uh, just before the war. But when the war started, I had no hesitation to go or to stay because Ukraine is my country and uh, it looks like when the country is okay, it, it, it seems as you're living with the person, the person is healthy, the person has good job, has lots of money, you're all happy and, and we're together. But then the person loses the job or gets ill and something is wrong and you say, oh no, goodbye, I don't want you ill, I don't want you poor, I don't want you... For me, it was totally same. Yeah, for me personally, it was totally wrong decision uh, to leave the country unless you live in uh, under under direct uh, direct attack but again you never know where would be direct attack so people decided for for themselves i knew i'm more useful here because i'm active i have a really huge network and i can be persuasive and i measured for myself where is more use of me and of course there was more use in ukraine i no even doubts no one no minute doubts that i would stay Yes. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say uh, that some a lot of people are are joining us, uh, and uh, Gulsum was joining us, and she said hi to you. Of course, uh, you you worked uh, together, and also you're part of the same community of certified management consultants. Uh, and then Ron Finch, who is uh, joining us from Italy, is saying hi. Um, and uh, yeah, they will, we'll see more people posting as time goes on. Uh, when, you, when you stayed uh, in Ukraine, uh, well, there was a, Kiev was, was under attack and I know that you took part of the territorial defense, you were working with the, the military, right? And uh, anybody who was uh, participating. Can you please talk a little bit more about that? Uh, especially now that Kiev is under attack again, it's not the, the same scale at this point, but uh, those early days, it was really scary and really terrible for us to watch from anywhere in the world of what was happening. And my heart was bleeding, just thinking of just imagining that if Kiev falls, that would be that would be a disaster. But it didn't, thanks to people like you, thanks to people that you worked with. 
Um, that was, I have my parents who live 10 kilometers from Kyiv in the suburb. And uh, of course I am, I am responsible. And uh, it was, for them, it was also under no question that they would leave. So I have two, two parents with me. And uh, I came to them and in their region, in their village, um, I knew the monitor of the of the village, and uh, I helped them. I immediately switched in organizational process because that that's something which is professional professional uh, quality and what I can do. And we started with organizing the um, processes of uh, helping helping different categories of people. Uh, first of all, helping the, the people from Kyiv, then, uh, then um, if we had fights just in, in this particular region, then how to help um, militaries who, who would need help. So we organized medical help, we organized uh, uh, food help, we organized uh, all military necessary, necessary clothes and uh, uh, not not weapon for that time because we didn't know now now we do but for that time no so we, we worked in different directions simultaneously so we built this teal organization that that's volunteering volunteering community in ukraine is a bright example of this teal organization when nobody says what to do but people see the tasks take the task and what 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 the most um, surprising it's the level of trust we immediately had to the people we never saw before for example the the first uh, uh, type of weapon i bought which was pretty expensive i sent the money to the person uh, to ukrainian in poland whom i never met before and whom i knew from one person who is friend of one, uh, another person and friend of the third person so it it was if i wanted to find them it would be imp to him it would be impossible but i directed him lots of money and i got the weapon which i which i asked for and it happened all all over ukraine people trusted each other the most valuable things so they asked could you please pick up my parents from one region to another the person they didn't know before and the person took the parents and took the children in their car and moved to the border and helped them to cross the border and to to leave the country so it, all country was like really one one family it's not it's not even it's not even friendship it's it's close and um in in usual life we are, we are average people and we want the best for ourselves and then can we can be rude and we can uh, fight and and we can show that i'm good and you're not but in this particular time all ukraine was so much polite let me help you and let me help you though the situation was that you you first you should save yourself no, that didn't happen. People really supported and people really helped each other. It was, and it's dream of all Ukrainians now, and, and not only dream, already plans, because we have now lots of sessions on uh, vision, where we produce vision of future Ukraine. And what we think of uh, is how to keep this atmosphere, how to keep this support, how to keep this trust inside the country, not having a war in the country. Actually, for me, an ideal thing would be if the whole world would, would, would start thinking about it. How to keep such an atmosphere but you're, when you're not enemies, when you're not competitors, but when you support each other because we all together uh, make the world stronger. And for me, this now this is the project I will tell you uh, a bit later about. Uh, starting changing mindset of people on accepting the world, not as a competitive place but a partnership place but it's mindset thing not you you can't you can't tell people do this because they need to believe that this is so and we're planning to open a set of folk schools that scandinavian experience we would we would work with um, adult people mindset on um, keeping this trust and support uh, of each other i i really believe in this project and i uh, believe that after ukraine we can spend it all over the world
Well, well yeah, yeah. Again, this is uh, this is a great perspective, and it just just only proves that even in the most difficult times, in the worst times, there is still uh, a lot of hope, and there is actually a lot of. Uh, commitment right and because you're talking about how th these lessons these terrible lessons of this war can be applied in the future of ukraine which will come we hope it will be very soon so this will be this terrible experience can in fact uh be something that you can be used uh for the future not to repeat it but to uh to apply the lessons that you've learned. I just wanted to welcome uh, Tim Son uh, from Pennsylvania. He's joining us. Tim actually was my teacher, the person who taught me to do this live streaming. Uh, so I am very thankful to him. And he's saying, uh, love this idea of partnership uh, place over a, a competitive place. I think, uh, all of us in this world, in it doesn't matter which country you, you live in, and certainly us in the U.S. at this point, we could definitely uh, benefit from this idea of building partnerships over competition. So this is this is a great a great idea, great you know lesson that that you are sharing with us. I also wanted to uh, mention Ron. He was posting earlier, uh, thanking you for your your bravery and uh, saying that your bravery and just the the commitment uh, definitely helped a lot of other people. Uh, you also mentioned uh, teal uh, businesses, and I just wanted to bring in this picture here. Because uh, I was actually looking it up, and I know that this notion of teal business, as well as other types of businesses, this color-coded businesses, came from Frederick Laloux and his book on reinventing organizations, which he called uh, a guide to creating organizations inspired uh, by the new stage of human consciousness. So when you talked about the teal. Uh, type of business that's at the very top of this picture, this bigger, bigger circle. And this is actually uh, represents a, a, a successful organizations of the future. Uh, in in Lalu's opinion, these organizations, uh, they have a high degree of flexibility, open systems and organizational level that leads to amazing sustainable Growth, and that's what you're talking about. This cooperation, this you know, trust that you witnessed, that you participated in, it's it's you know, truly amazing. So this this what Elena was talking about, referring to the the teal organization. Uh, can you can you maybe talk a little bit more? Because when we were discussing it, you said that there were some amazing uh, some amazing uh, examples of businesses, local businesses that pivoted in this difficult times, and instead of uh, you know running away or closing, they actually started doing everything to to support the resistance. Can you please tell us more about those businesses and maybe examples and the people that you worked with? Uh, actually, if I started enumerating, that would be a long list because, you know, there is a formula of success, which I love a lot. And uh, I'm teaching at top business school in Ukraine. I teach management and leadership. And uh, I always share with my students form formula of success by Thomas Leonard. Uh, and it says that success consists of th three components, 10%, 40%, and 50%, where 10% is uh, knowledge and experience, 40% is your outlook, and 50% is people around. So the community, people, your team, your friends is 50% of your success. And now I, I have always been, I always agreed with this formula and shared, but now I believe that uh, people around is not 50, but probably 90% of, uh, of your success. And um, it, uh, I have always been selective whom to invite in my life uh, and with whom to share my, my management consulting experiences and personal experiences. And I'm happy to say that none of them betrayed. 
that all those people I considered being mine uh, on the right side uh, and fully active and fully supportive. So I can tell really, really dozens of people who, who are involved in the procedures. And uh, our businessmen um, can set the priorities. They fully realize that if we do not help the, our army now, there will be no sense of, of business. Uh, new business models appeared now uh, and Ukrainians think of relocating business outside Ukraine, especially from eastern part, but such a business model so that to be able to earn in different country, but to pay taxes and support fin financially uh, Ukraine for the moment because, because of the army mostly. You understand that if we do not help army, then nobody helps us. And all the businesses uh, um, involved, they have different actions. You know, for example, this, this all income of this week uh, is going goes to the army. Or they they set different auctions, like we sell uh, rare things or very very expensive things, and those who for those who pay more, like auction, and the. Uh, uh, all this money goes goes to uh, to military. I don't know whether you heard it or not, but uh, some weeks, some days ago, we had fantastic, unique experience when our famous volunteer Sergei Pritula, he's a showman. Uh, you know, Ukraine is good with show people <laughs> to to do big things, uh, and he said, "People, we need Bayraktars for our army. Bayraktar is Turkish." Um, Turkish weapon, which is really useful for our army, and he said we need we need three Bayraktars. That's uh, six hundred million krivnas. Uh, it is incredible sum. I don't remember the equivalent in in dollars or something which would be understandable. And he said we have one week. We need we need one week and to buy these three Bayraktars. It was really incredible because for the first six or seven hours he already had half of the necessary sum and we had 600 million grimness in three days not in uh, not in seven so it, it, it was called uh, operation folk by Rektar. and actually turkish company which produces by Rektar also was following this this action and when we said, okay, we had money not for three, but for four Bayraktars in three days. And the Turkish company Baikar, which produces Bayraktars, said, wow, we are inspired. We present three Bayraktars to your army. And that for us was as well, like, very impressive because we feel the support from, from, from the whole world. Uh, and this su such uh, such cases inspire and it, it's it just one we have every day small uh, small uh, um, achievements uh, which is maybe small for the whole Ukraine but is huge for some for some people for some our uh, militaries for some region uh, um, Ukraine is full of heroes now and it's uh, I'm so proud to be to be part of this unique, uh, unique country and unique family. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, what's what's happening there, and uh, of course, watching the news uh, is really scary for us around the world. But on the on the other hand, we are like I personally am in in awe of uh, the heroism and the people of Ukraine who are just standing together against this this aggression and i just wanted to show again a comment from steven tupper who is actually in kiev now he's one of the directors of our foundation he's been living and working in ukraine for a long time on donor funded projects and now he is also involved in a lot of activities um helping people of Ukraine. So he says, yeah, one key feature of cooperation is that the formal borders between state agencies, NGOs, and uh, the, the civil society organizations are breaking down at micro level where uh, circumstances force them to work and think outside the box. And this thinking outside the box actually reminds me of the name of uh, the conference that we held in 2014 in Kiev that was also thinking outside the box. 
So uh, once again, in all these years, Ukraine uh, showing the whole world an example of how people can uh, think and work and live outside the box, which is uh, amazing. There is also there was also a question uh, from Ron uh, about examples of how some of the Ukrainian businesses have successfully uh, evolved to meet current needs during war times. Well, you, you already started talking about it, but maybe you have some other examples because I know you work with a lot of businesses and involved in, in many projects. Um, of course, now we cannot work with strategies uh, because strategic planning is something which is for a particular period of time. The maximum we can plan is about one week. But actually, business found the way they were, they were out the solution, and we do work with the strategies, and we deal uh, we divided it into two parts. So uh, you know that uh, psychiatrists have such a term. Um, I will try to say it in English, uh, after traumatic growth. So some, some people and the organization will, be, will, be, will have trauma after the war, physical or, or psychological, but some people and organizations will, will, um, will grow because they will find internal, uh, internal things to, to make them stronger. And the um, Ukrainian consultants now um, help organizations and people to find these these things inside the organization, which will make them stronger, and which will uh, give them this post-traumatic growth. Um, it looks like that we work with strategies, uh, and we divide strategies into two parts. The first part, uh, what kind of um, uh, during the war time, what do I do during the war time? And second part, uh, end of war, victory plus one year. So what my company, what, what what my company will be like at the day of the victory, what I want it to be, and what it will be like one year after the victory. So and we have two type uh, two two types of strategies. And we consider we, mostly we work as scenario planning. So we have worst case scenarios which is easy for us because it is already implemented uh, anyway all other scenarios are much better than than the one we have now and people started believe that okay if uh, if there are some things or some products we can do now it means that we can continue thinking and continue creating new products and and services and companies started uniting yeah started uh, thinking what new products can appear so that 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 cake that they can cover uh, current needs. Of course, most of the companies added military components to what, what they do. Different uh, products and services for, for militaries to cover their basic needs, because all country now is working to cover military's basic needs, starting from uh, shampoo and, uh, and underwear and, and socks and all this stuff. And they need specific, um, specific clothes and specific uh, hygiene products. And and so company invent and, and uh, create uh, totally new products which could serve uh, could serve the army uh, second second aspect the companies do uh, lots of our people left the country and most of them are talented specialists and so companies started thinking how can i attract people back what do I need to do in the company for people wanted to, to work with me and to come back? Of course, it depends on safe, safety situation in the country, but actually companies think of their competitiveness from HR brand. So what can I offer my employees in order to have the best, uh, the best people? So mostly we work with an um, unusual combination. So who is my partner to create na my product? What can I uh, create for militaries? Because this is important. And how can I um, empower my, my HR brand in order to attract uh, strong specialists who left the country now? So these are three main, main aspects. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lena, for explaining this. Uh, Stephen is asking, 
uh, he says, well, that uh, it seems to, to me that the key need uh, is to keep the economy alive. So that uh, what measures do you think are best to do this? Ukraine needs to produce itself and avoid over-reliance on external aid. This is the biggest, the biggest pain, actually, for the moment, because, of course, it deals on the state level, not only on the business level. Uh, business needs totally different uh, laws and regulations, which it has now. Um, and we have a um, national committee which works on um, economic strategy of the country and they know lots of people who are actively involved in this in this strategy uh, but in this aspect unfortunately the country is very very slow because not all people uh, believe that that it's time to deal with economy. This, they believe first victory, then economy, which is wrong approach because it's absolutely two parallel process because no victory without working economy. The, the biggest problem now is on the state level with laws and regulations and uh, taxation and all, all this thing. And people from uh, civil society try to influence and try to offer different solutions, what it should be done for business to keep working. Uh, but for the moment we are not heard at the state level i hope it will change but because if it's not it means that there will be second wave of businesses who will leave the country consciously not as refugees but on purpose understanding that with such rules and regulations it's impossible to to work business so it's high risk if no regulations start work ukraine will leave uh, more powerful businesses this is the we don't have a solution right now. Thank you, Lena. Thank you for answering this question. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, uh, when we discussed the topics for today's uh, conversation, uh, you said that for five years you w were involved in a project in Mariupol. You actually worked there, and of course uh, it's devastating to see and to know what happened to the city. Uh, are you still involved uh, with the with the mayor, or is, what can you share about that project, and if what are the the plans on that? And I know it's it's a hard topic, and uh, it's it's very emotional. Uh, I think for all of us around the world, just uh, to see that city being uh, completely destroyed and was uh, the city that, as you said, was uh, one of the most European cities in Ukraine. There was a lot of investment into that city to make it uh, the best city. And this is what, what happened. I'm sorry to bring it up, but if you can just tell us a little bit more about what you know, uh, of what's happening there right, you know, right now. Um, thank you for bringing up this topic because I believe that all the world uh, should not forget about it as as well as about uh, Azov, uh, Azov uh, defensors. Uh, by the way, 140 of them were uh, came back yesterday from uh, from Russia and they were exchanged for uh, for Russian soldiers and we're really happy for that. Uh, yes, Mariupol was one of the most European cities in Ukraine. Uh, it has changed a lot since 2015 when new mayor um, came came to power. Uh, he he was and is young and active and ambitious, and he really attracted lots of investment uh, in the in the city uh, from Ukraine and outside Ukraine and. Uh, each city has a budget, uh, budget for growth and budget for, for life. Uh, when he became a mayor, budget for growth was 1.5%. In five years of him being a mayor, uh, budget of growth of the city was 40%. This is unique formula. No other cities in Ukraine, and I believe in the world, do not have 40% of budget for, for growth and for development. For development. And that was the unique situation because really lots of things was were, were done and more there were even more plans and even more ambitious. But you know the phenomenon of war is that uh, people who are good managers in 
uh, peacetime, uh, that's, that's difficult to be managers in wartime and vice versa. Uh, those who are good managers in wartime, you would never expect them to be managers in, in peacetime. This is, this is the phenomenon. Um, still uh, about 100, uh, 1000 people, no, I don't remember the exact number uh, of people who are still in, uh, in Mariupol, but the situation is awful there because there are diseases, they have no food, they have no clean water, they have no medical help, uh, and they open more and more um, um, graves all, all, over, all over the city. Uh, what what um, yes we're in contact with Mariupol mayor what he does he opens special centers which which are called I am Mariupol in different cities of uh, Ukraine and these cen centers help uh, people from Mariupol they give them uh, medical support psychological support uh, legal support they help them to find the job they they help to deal with the kids so all services possible uh, now that about 10 centers in, in, in Kiev, in Vinnytsia, in Dnieper, in Zaporozhye, in Kropivnytsky, in Kalush, and there are planned to be such centers in every city, so that people from Mariupol, no matter where they, they live, where they stay, they could come to the center and get all, all support uh, immediately. Uh, the, the thing is that some people from Mariupol um, are angry with the situation because they um, uh they they see it from from different side and they they feel uh, they feel um, betrayed um, from from mayor side and there is some anger against but okay every situation has many sides and and many components and i believe that after the victory there will be a serious serious um, aspect on this on this issue um i i don't know whether they say that mariupol will will be will be live and it will be rebuilt um and it should be thought very carefully about strategy of mariupol because it can it in my mind it cannot be city as usual city for for families for children and so on it can be something like a castle because it will be still at the border with russian which will not disappear and so it, sh it should be city castle as for me so there should be huge rebranding of the of the city but it's again again matter of uh, discussion thank you Sorry. yeah it's um i couldn't even think about this but yeah city castle city memorial i guess of what what happened because can't even imagine how people could could be living there it was it would be dangerous in the first place and also bringing so many terrible memories uh, i see uh francesco dapri is joining us here um your colleague from ICMCI, International Council of Management Consulting Organizations. So he's asking why a manager in peacetime sometimes cannot be manager in wartime. So he's referring to what you said earlier. Can you please, Can you please respond? respond? Yeah, before this, there is even small correction. Francesca is not just a colleague. Francesca is a friend. And Francesca has been near all the time and he supported uh, a lot of psychologically and financially from the first day of the war and i'm extremely grateful knowing that there is a person i can always rely on the person i can cry to uh, and i'm really really grateful for this incredible support um, and this is a, again a really phenomenon that um, i work with uh, different organizations yeah managers what surprised them mostly during the war and they said that people who were very active and reliable in the peacetime actually in most cases were most those who ran away and instead on the key positions came people who you would never expect that that he could manage in 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 peacetime it was like an ordinary expert not not a 
bright, but someone who does his job uh, carefully, regularly, uh, and normal. That that's phenomena which we need to to investigate. But I guess I have I have the version. Because in peacetime, it's very easy to, to plan, to organize, to motivate, and to control. So for classical manager functions. Now you have to manage without planning, without organization, without control. So out of three or four management functions, you have only one, motivation. When motivation is huge now, people have, you don't need to motivate specially. People become, became proud of belonging to the nation and to the country, so people are motivated. But actually, you cannot, you can plan only, only for the day. And for people structured, who usually occupy the position, it's, it, it appeared to be really tough. And those who don't want to be managers in, in peacetime, because it's boring, because you need plan, because you need to achieve goals, because you have KPIs and all this stuff, now it is not boring. And now people with different personal characteristics uh, come, come to power. And uh, I did not support our, our president. I did not vote for him. I believe he could not be the president because of proper experience. Um, but I must admit, that for this time um, we are lucky actually to have such informal president to, to have human president who talks to um, to international society international community Th this is this is the right thing he does uh, though he's not a good manager for for peacetime he's he's he should not be but in what time this this is cool job really so i believe different people with different characteristics Thank you. Yes, it was quite amazing, actually, how Zelensky came out and how he became this amazing, you know, leader of Ukraine at this time of, uh, at, at the time of the war. I know that there were different opinions about his candidacy, and uh, uh, right now he, I guess, he really, really is, you know, critical in uh, especially how he manages international community, how he comes out and just talks to. Uh, the leaders of uh, the Western countries, and yeah, is um, he is loved all over the world right now. Uh, speaking about help and aid, uh, I just wanted to bring here, and Anya can can help me with that. You you mentioned that there is this foundation that you would like to uh, to pay attention to and to kind of promote a little bit. It's called uh, Blagodini Fond Amriana Kraina. And I understand that the, it means the, the dream country, right? The, the dream country. This is the name of the foundation. So uh, can you please tell us a little bit more about this foundation and, and what it does? And uh, we will post a link to their website. And also in the comments, we will post the link to their donation page. So because this broadcast will be uh it will it will stay on on social media it will stay on youtube so a lot more people will be able to watch it later and hopefully they will be able to contribute to the foundation as well can you please talk about uh the, the dream country foundation uh this is the my, my partner fund uh, it was organized, I, I already taught, mentioned that I, work, uh, I teach in a business school and it was founded out by my uh, graduate Vadim, Vadim Skripnik, who from the very beginning uh, of the war was, was um, and, and actually all his company, uh, Astarta, that one of the biggest agricultural company in Ukraine, uh, was absolutely involved in, uh, in all support in all directions, starting from military, then for people who have to change, uh, who have to relocate, those who, families who, whose husbands or, or brothers or relatives were killed during the war. Uh, they help cities which suffered a lot. Like, it, it no sense to help Mariupol for the moment because it, it's still, but Irpien, Bucha, that Kiev region, uh, Chernigov, Sumy. So the fund works in several directions at the same time very successfully. And I know that they give every every last grivna to uh, to all the 
all the people who need it they they use it directly and i would be grateful for your support because uh they do great job really thank you uh and yeah thank you lena i i actually looked up at their website and i think they're very focused also on you know rebuilding and on 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 the future of Ukraine, that's where they, as well as to, to helping the army at this point. I also have another good example of uh, an, an organization or rather a platform uh, which combines different projects around Ukraine, Dobro, and they, they I don't know if you, if you heard about it, but they are also very interesting. They, they have a lot of projects that they just put on their, on their platform and then you can actually donate to a specific project that you might choose, whether it would be helping some kids in a particular uh, orphanage or particular hospital or whether you can even help animal shelters or you can help uh, different other smaller organizations. So it's also very interesting and very nice platform uh, to go to and to donate if someone wants to do it. Uh, as we are nearing uh, the end of our discussion, I had this this question to you, and I hope you don't mind. Uh, I know as a very international person and also as ex-vice chair of ICMCI, the International Council of Management Consulting Institutes, you work with consultants all over the, the globe, and you also, of course, uh, worked and you actually learned from consultants in Russia. Even during uh, our conference in Ukraine in 2014, we had uh, a few of them uh, there attending, of course. And I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering uh, how is this, you know, relationship going now? Because in well, in this in this time of the war, uh, we have no relationships now, and the, probably. 99% and 9 will not have in the future, uh, except uh, two of them, our, our best teacher, uh, Arkady uh, Prigozhin. But actually in 2014, when the Crimea was occupied, he wrote to Ukrainian consultants a letter apologizing on behalf of Russian intelligent people uh, for, uh, for Ukrainian people, because he said it, it's a huge mistake of our government, it should have never happened. And in protest to this decision, he left Russia. And since that time, he has been living in Israel and he is now active in support. Uh, uh, and he writes in comments on uh, on Facebook and he's here and totally supportive. And the uh, one more, uh, our colleague uh, who wrote me on the very first day on 20th fourth of february just asking how how i am uh, which it was impossible to answer and since then none of them ever appeared or never never wanted communication uh, neither from our side we also didn't initiate uh, anything so i don't know their position uh, there is no official position on the side of russian institute of consultants so uh, no relations Okay, well, this is this is very sad, but uh, on the other hand, it does show uh, it is important to know uh, somebody's position or no position. Uh, I myself, as uh, a citizen of uh, the United States and Russia, I think that Russians can only be humble at this time and instead of voicing their various opinions, sometimes this uh weird opinions they they only the best thing they can do is just to stay humble and to support as much as they can wherever they are that i think is the only the best thing for any russian on this planet at, the, at this time it is a shame uh for russia and for all of the you know, russian citizens even if we're living abroad we still feel this this shame and, and should be feeling this shame that's that's my opinion yeah thank you very much lena uh well uh we still have a few minutes and if there are no questions coming let's just see if they, somebody will be posting but again i wanted to end this uh on a a positive note because we all hope and pray that the war will be over and there will be the new 
Ukraine in many ways, just like you said, there will be more cooperation between people, between different organizations. There will be more understanding maybe of the values that we have in our regular life that we don't always appreciate. Uh, and when those values are taken away in one day, then all of a sudden we have to, uh, we, we have a great appreciation of that. Uh, because we are an international foundation, we work with uh, consultants and businesses all over the world and different organizations. Can you please uh, maybe talk a little bit more about international help that's coming to Ukraine and that has been coming and a little bit more about what uh, international organizations could do for Ukraine in the future to help it not only to win this war, which we understand needs to happen, but also in the future when the war is over, uh, what kind of help will be needed in Ukraine? And, and that, that's as well what I wanted to, to, to finish with, with the huge gratitude to uh, all the countries in the world who supported Ukraine in different uh, aspects and with military weapon and supporting people who left Ukraine because most feedback of those who, who are not in Ukraine is also huge gratitude for warm welcome both from country sides and from people sides. Everyone is very, very supportive. And this is important to know that we are not the only one in the world because this is not a war against Russia and uh, between Russia and Ukraine. This is war between between kindness and evil. This is war between old civilization and new civilization. And actually the whole world is divided into those who want to join and stay in this old civilization, civilization of evil, uh, and against those countries which understand that we all, if we want to keep our planet, if you want to keep humankind, if you want to keep human as as, as future, uh, we need to move on. We need to go to the next step and to have different values and different, different civilization. And um, uh, we're really grateful to all countries who, who support, especially to, to to Poland, to the to Great Britain, to the U.S., uh, to Litva, Estonia, the Baltic Baltic countries, which are like close, close and close the, for, for all countries who who are supporting. And parallel, actually, I I had some learning courses from um, from the U.S., from Great Britain, from different countries, how to survive in crisis or managing times, and, and maybe looking for some instruments which I need to give to my clients as management consultant. And I realized one thing that yes, uh, Ukrainian management consultants uh, learned a lot from consultants from different countries, but after the victory, we welcome all management consultants to learn from Ukrainians. We have a lot to share now, uh, not only for the war time, but for, for the next level of growth of our civilization. And uh, what we need, we need, the, we need the victory, of course, not the peace, but the victory for the moment. And then we need you come and choose the region or the city or the sphere of your interest in Ukraine and become part of the team to start building new civilization, which will definitely born here in Ukraine. Wow. Yeah, this is this is very powerful. Um, and I really, really hope that this, uh, but it's already happening, but that it will really, the victory will come first very soon and then the, the rebuilding will start. And just like you said, not only of your country, Ukraine, but of uh, the whole, the whole world of the whole civilization. Thank you so much, Lena. Uh, it was great to see you again and to have you as our guest. And uh, thank you again for finding the time and the place and uh, the, the resources to actually do the, this broadcast. I wish you all the very best. Please stay safe. And please, I hope that your family and your colleagues are all safe. And please continue your, your great work. Uh, stay in touch let us know how we can help and we will the best we can do is to spread 
the you know word and uh, spread all spread all this information that you that you gave us today. Thank you so much. Anya is also yeah, thanking you and Stephen. Uh, thank you for all your amazing work and for today's conversation. Thank you so much. I wish you all the um, best things which could happen in the world. And first of all, uh, I wish you peace. Thank you very much for your support and for your friendship. And of course, see you soon. Uh, and I would be happy to finish our next meeting uh, with the phrase, welcome to Ukraine. Always. Always. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Much love, Much Lena. love Lena. All the very All the best. Very best. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye to everybody. At this point, we are finishing our broadcast. And we'll see you uh, exactly in one month on August 1st for our next episode of Consulting Without Borders Perspectives. Please stay tuned.